The powwow, the Native American celebration of life and cultural survival. The powwow brings together young and old from multiple tribes to celebrate and share their customs and traditions. The powwow exemplifies the ideal of pan-Indianism that is blending of tribal cultures. The pan-Indian spirit that is now honored by the festivities of the powwow with the intermingling of native cultures originated from a very dark period in U.S. history. A time when Indian dancing along with native languages, customs, and traditions were viewed as barriers to assimilating the Indian into the white man's world. In the late 1800s, the United States government instituted Native American boarding schools in an effort to assimilate the Indians into the white man's world by stripping them of their culture, heritage, and beliefs. Ironically, in attempting to decimate the Native American identity, these schools provided a shared experience among the students which broke long-standing inter-tribal barriers and became an important step toward the pan-Indianism movement among indigenous people in the United States. In 1830, the United States attempted to solve the so-called Indian problem by enacting the Indian Removal Act, which forced the Native Americans to move west of the Mississippi to make room for further U.S. expansion. Most Native Americans had been removed to reservations and there was little western territory left to push them towards. Carlisle Industrial School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania was one of the first and most well-known Native American boarding schools in the United States. Carlisle served as a blueprint for more than 200 other Native American boarding schools that were instituted across the country. It was established by Colonel Richard Henry Pratt, who coined the phrase, kill the Indian, save the man. In his opinion, forced assimilation through education would ultimately protect the Native American population because he believed that cultural differences, not race, were the barriers that were keeping the Indians from assimilating into the Anglo-American society. Richard Pratt, who it was his idea to assimilate Indians, and he decided that the that the uh, adults were hopeless, and the only way that they could make Indians white would be to uh, take the children, separate them from their culture and their family, and make them feel shame for who they are and ashamed of being native and um, make them reject uh, their own uh, identity. Indian parents had no choice in whether they sent their children to the schools. Children were often taken by force and parents who refused would face harsh consequences including imprisonment or withholding of rations. Upon entering the boarding schools, the Indian children were stripped of their native identities and assigned new white names. Their native clothing was taken and they were issued uniforms. Their long braids, a symbol of pride for the Native Americans, were cut short and they were forbidden to speak their native languages. Professional photographers were often enlisted to visit the schools and take pictures of the students to illustrate the remarkable transformation from savage to civilized. Yet, through the agencies of the government, they are being rapidly brought from their state of comparative savagery and barbarism to one of civilization. The before and after images of the children were part of various propaganda campaigns to garner support and additional funding for the boarding schools. The images of the students upon entering the schools showed them in dirty, torn native clothing. The after pictures portrayed a tidy and cleaned up student who was learning how to be a civilized white man. The staged photographs were nothing more than artistic fiction created to hide the truth about what was occurring behind the walls of the boarding schools. The schools operated like prisons or military camps with very strict schedules and rules. You know, the way they, they, I, I kind of have to say, punish you whenever you did something wrong in, in that school. You go in the military, it's, it's not as uh, strict. You're used to the real strictness already. So go, in the military, you know, it's, <laughs> He already experienced stuff like that. In 1928, a government report published by Lewis Miriam stated, The survey staff finds itself obligated to say frankly and unequivocally that the provisions for the care of the Indian children in the boarding schools are grossly inadequate. 
Despite the scathing government report, the boarding schools would continue to operate in the United States for decades as generations of Native American children were subjected to cruelty and abuse. The emphasis on learning English was one of the primary goals of the boarding schools. The government believed that native languages were barriers that were causing the Indians to remain isolated from the Anglo-American world. Once they entered the boarding schools, the students were forbidden from speaking their native languages. Once subsequent and multiple generations of American Indian children went to school, um, it magnified that effect of the loss of traditions. So when the students came back, as most of them did, to their home communities, you know, they couldn't speak the language anymore. They were somewhat foreigners in, amongst their own people. The forced assimilation had unintended and unexpected consequences. By supplying the students from different tribes who spoke different native languages a common language, intertribal communication was now possible. For the first time, Native American children from different tribes were able to interact together and identify common interests and experiences. Intertribal bonds and relationships developed, and this was the beginning of pan-Indianism among the indigenous people. Different Indian ways were shared with different tribes, and, and that, that helped facilitate pan-Indianism because people came to know each other in a better way. At the time, intertribal relationships were uncommon as most Native Americans stayed on their own reservations. The U.S. government did not recognize the various tribes as separate nations. The Native American people, however, took pride in their unique tribal identities and celebrated their different languages, customs, and traditions. These differences had previously been barriers for the Indians because divided, they had little power against the U.S. government. Confined to the boarding schools, their tribal differences no longer seemed to matter. The children helped each other, comforted each other, and found strength in their friendships and newfound alliances. The children needed each other to get through the difficult and lonely times in the boarding schools. That was a horrible, most, it was a horrible experience, you know, and um, that's what put me through was having friends. And you all have the same thing in common. Once the young people returned to their reservations, they did not forget the relationships they had made in the boarding schools and the tribes began to work together to improve the Native American life. The Native American boarding school experience can be viewed as one of the great ironies in American history. The schools attempted to eradicate the Native American culture. However, the unintended result was strong intertribal relationships between the students and the formation of a pan-Indian identity. This ideal of pan-Indianism sparked a powerful social movement that ultimately created a new ethnic group, the American Indian. Pan-Indianism would manifest most significantly during the civil rights eras of the 1960s and 70s. Indigenous people now referred to themselves collectively as we and united over the shared experiences of the Native American boarding schools. The American Indian Movement, Red Power Movement, and the National Indian Youth Council gave the American Indians a voice as they organized protests, lobbied for legislation for Native Americans, and fought to improve the lives of indigenous people in the United States. The legacy associated with the boarding schools is one of abuse and multi-generational trauma that has had long-lasting effects on the students who attended them and their descendants. Native American children were taken from their communities, deprived of their native languages, and robbed of their culture and spirituality, all in the name of educating them. There is no denying the horrors associated with the American Indian boarding school system. However, the positive outcome of the development of an American Indian identity that transcends the barriers of the tribal boundaries is a true example of the resilience and spirit of the Native American people and something that should be celebrated. We were able to uh, go in hand, not only with uh, other Indian tribes, but with other uh, people, uh, uh, Caucasians, Black, Hispanic, Asians, and, um, and uh, we're all equal, and we need to share uh, whatever we have and, uh, and teach our culture to others and share our culture and tradition with other, other people.